Okay, troubleshooting. We'll go through this pretty quick. You guys, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, no liquids coming, being delivered from the pump. <clears throat> Obviously the pump's not primed. Suction line is clogged, has a grease rag, so on and so forth. Impeller clogged with four material. Now this has happened on uh, impeller clogged. We have some applications over in Eastern Kansas, Iola, kind of over there, they call it green oil. And I had a guy call me and said, man, this thing ain't pumping shit. I said, did you, you know, look in it, did you take any, and literally the entire face of it had pitch, it was over the, it had filled inside of here tar from his tank battery and had filled up coke inside of there. And it basically, if you just took this and spun it in there with a solid face on it, no fluid could get into the eye of the impeller, it wouldn't pump anything. There was actually, phys I, I thought maybe the shaft was broken. Sometimes, you know, the pump will still be running, the shaft broke, in between you can't see it. I thought that was what the problem was, but it theoretically had plugged the impeller completely off and it just wasn't pumping anything. Uh, suction pipe opening not submerged enough. In other words, suction lift too high. What is the maximum level that you can lift liquid? Water. If you were to have a suction lift, what's the maximum before it starts to vapor? With atmospheric conditions pushing on it at sea level and all the rest of the parameters at 60 degrees. About 25 feet is the maximum lift you can lift water before it starts to, to boil. Uh, pump not producing rated flow. Uh, I got an air leak. Has anybody chased an air leak before on a suction application where you were sucking air? Happens. Obviously, there's pretty self explanatory Air leak through a stuffing box. You guys run in pack boxes if you have a suction issue. Sometimes I've seen packing go back down it. And the only way I've been able to find it is with a soap bottle. Spray soapy water on it and see if it physically goes into the, it, it will go into the stuffing box if there is a pulling a vacuum. Gorman rups. Gorman rups are notorious where you have a suction lift. You can't figure out why it's not running right, but it's sucking air from somewhere. Uh, worn <coughs> suction side plate. <clears throat> those again, a Gorman Rupp, a Jaeger, whatever. Those kind of pumps have a wear plate. Uh, pump starts, then stops pumping. Uh, improperly primed air. Whoever, has anybody had an airlock pump? The centrifugal get airlocked, it happens. Like I said, they will not suck air and they will not evacuate it very good without something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Bearings run hot. <clears throat> and when we say the bearings, obviously we're talking about the power frame. Uh, improper alignment, improper lubrication, uh, lube cooling. And we'll get out there and we we'll get a little hands on. We'll talk more about lubrication for the bearings. Uh, motor requires excessive power. Uh, head is lower than ratings. Pumps too much liquid. In other words, we're running way out to the right. You're tripping out. So that'd be a good sign if we're tripping out a motor and we know we don't have any plug lines or anything like that. Would be a good sign that maybe we're, we're running too far to the right. <clears throat> if the liquid is heavier, in other words, if it has a higher specific gravity, What's that going to do to our horsepower? You guys pumping 14 gravity crap. The thicker it is, the phosphoric acid, it takes more horsepower, trips out. I haven't had this happen very long, very often. The stuffing box being too tight, most of the time you got, it'd have to be damn tight to lock the shaft down and trip out the motor, but I suppose theoretically. Uh, rotating parts bind. In other words, if you were touching off, if the impeller was touching off in the in the volute, uh, especially stainless to stainless, once it touches off, bad things happen. It goes to galding, turns blue. Nice, pretty shades of color. Uh, pump is noisy and vibrates. Uh, obviously, we, and you'll see this improper alignment come up a lot of times. Uh, those those things can be addressed. It's all pretty self-explanatory stuff. The one that you need to be aware of as far as operation is, is cavitation. 
excessive leakage from stuffing box, <clears throat> um, packing gland improperly adjusted. <laughs> Jason told me about this one. You guys will premiere, so I'll get a kick. He uh, had a gentleman packing a box, and he said it just won't hold. Can't get the packing to hold in it, and he ended up using quarter-inch packing in a box that required three-eighths. You got to use the right size of packing before. Doesn't matter how much shit you keep pushing in it. If it's not the right size, it's not going to hold. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was laughing. <clears throat> Somebody's trying to be funny. They put Chesterton as a brand of seal. In other words, if you'd have used the right brand of seal, you wouldn't have had a leak. But anyway, overheating mechanical seal, shaft sleeve scored. Okay, now we, we're going to go back and we're going to cover that hands-on stuff real quick. This is the program that we have in-house that we subscribe to. And most manufacturers uh, will work with this material. So somebody just off the top of your head, uh, give me a application. Give me some kind of, what are we going to pump? You want to pump some oil, crude oil? 1034. Okay, you're going to have to help me because I don't know all the specifics on it. But. <laughs> you got I can't see that part. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up here in tools, change the units, and I want to read it in, you want to read it in PSI or you want to read it in feet of head? PSI. PSI, and we want it in U.S. gallons per minute. And what is our temperature on 1034? We want it in Fahrenheit. 80 degrees. You gotta click on that. There you go. Click on that and all. Okay, elevation. We said it was 1215. And you can get way carried away here. Density? 1400 square grams. 1400? 1.40. Oh, 1.40. Okay. Oof. Jeez, you had me scared yeah, there for a minute. You'll have to select the pump before you can get into that. Oh, get into that, okay. The system, three minutes and a half Durco. Oh, Durco. No, what are you doing? Well, no, we can go to Calo. And so what, what I have here is a C3 G2. Durco refers to theirs as Mark III Group 2. And the Mark III would be the one with the index bearing housing, your booster pumps. Mm -hmm. And it has the index bearing housing. You guys have the, the actual Mark IIs that has to be shimmed. They're a little bit older design. Uh, so that's what I have up there. Summit calls theirs a Clark three, go figure. But anyway, uh, give me a flow. Somebody give me a flow gallons per minute. 150, that's not too bad. And pressure, 40 pounds, 40 pounds. Okay. Is it this one? Oh, okay. 10. 34, oh. Okay, temperature is 68 degrees, specific gravity of 1.4. Viscosity, how many centipoise is that? It's probably, it's heavier than water, thicker than water, so it's probably around 15, 10, 15, something. And we didn't get into viscosity because it gets really, viscosity has more to do with um, horsepower than it does the head. In other words, something that weighs this very viscous, i.e. peanut butter, which we do pump it, and then you have all the way to the other side, which would be alcohol, something in water, specific gravity of, of one, S1 centipoise or 32 SSU, you can the viscosity, don't get hung up on it, just know what it is. It's basically the thickness of the fluid. 
And then you, then you, with the same viscosity thing, you can get into whether the fluid is thixotropic or dilutant. Thixotropic could be like ketchup. You can't get ketchup come out of a bottle, right? It's thick. You can shake it up or shear it, and it will flow out. The more, the more you shake it, the thinner it gets. Something that is dilutant, go the other way, that is shear sensitive would be like chocolate. The faster you stir it or turn it or candy or peanut brittle or anything like that, the thicker it gets. I mean, it gets where you, it'll lock a pump down. If you turn a chocolate pump too fast, it will theoretically get too thick and just shut it down, lock it up. So just know what it is. Don't get hung up on it. Just know what it is. We're going to put vapor pressure one. Okay, we have, a, we have a system that's like this. We have a suction head. We're pumping out of one tank to the other tank, which would be basically this one right here, right? We don't ever have any suction lift, right? What would this system be here? This would be a closed loop system, right? Actually, this would be another closed loop system. But just understand that we're working off of pumping one from one tank to the other. And most of the time, okay, here it gets into suction pipe. How many feet of suction pipe do we have? 20 feet maybe, I don't know. Size, sorry. We have, oh, here we're going to have, a, here's a question. We don't know what size we think we're going to be at, but we're going to size it so it's oversized, right? So we're going to put two inch pipe on this just for sake of grins. Discharge pipe, we're still going to go with the same two inch. Oops. You guys don't need to get hung up on this, but just know that we have this capability. We have iron pipe. Or PVC, hell, it don't matter, whatever. Did it? Yeah, I had to go back in here and put the bearing in. Oh, man. For some reason, this We ain't going to get hung up on that. That's neither here nor there. Okay, static head. How much static head do we have? We're not going to worry about that. If you want a best efficiency point, we can, we can go left or right of the best efficiency point. We can put add pumps to it. We can take a pump. In other words, if we wanted to do it with two pumps, and that would be what? Pumps in parallel? No. no parallel. A series would be going from one to the other. Yeah. Parallels, two pumps going to the same place, right? Mm -hmm. Same suction, same discharge. Okay. And we can go, let's just look at it with 3,600 and 1,800. Okay, these are all the pumps that would do that performance, whatever it was, 150 gallons a minute, 40 PSI. Here's one that's a three by one and a half by 10. I think Kent mentioned that one. 1750 RPM, nine inch impeller, so on and so forth. Here's, here's your power, what it's required. This would be non-overloading. So <coughs> we would put a 10 horsepower on it, so on and so forth. Here's the NPSH. See, there's 4.9. Okay, go down here to the 3500s. Where's the 3500? There's one right there. The 3500 RPM will do it with a 3 by 2 by 6 trim to what? 4.625. 4.625 times 2 is what? No. See how that works? Twice the speed, half the diameter of the impeller. That's what I was trying to get to with the whole affinity law. It's better described here. But anyway, so I can, this, see how we're out here in the middle? That's where our check mark is. This is our actual point on the curve. Mm -hmm. So we're closer to the middle of the curve here, right? This one's not even really on the curve. It's too big. This one's down at the bottom again. So this one's way to the right, way to the left. We would have huge axial load problems here, or radio load problems, excuse me. This one's too far out here to the right. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that one up there. We want to go ahead and choose that impeller or that pump. <clears throat> There's where we're at on the point or right there on the, on the system. Here's all of our information over here on the right. We hit OK. And what I can then do is I can email the pump data sheet to you, put your name in it, whatever the project is, so on and so forth, and you will get a sheet, a certified curve, not certified, what's the term I'm looking for? Published, published curve. If you want it certified, it has to be witness test. In other words, you're going to have to put it on a test stand and then some engineer is going to have to sign his name to it. This is a published curve for the performance data. And so uh, we can go over here. And it went to our printer and I'll pull it up and then you guys can look at it from that standpoint. Actually, no, it didn't. It, I hit email, didn't I? It's going to ask me who I want to send it to. So just know and understand that we have that capability. You're not going to have to go back to your Gould's catalog or your Summit catalog, find a point on the curve. All that stuff's going to be kicked out for you. And we do all that for you from that standpoint. So, and you can, we can play with it. We can put crude oil in it. We can put whatever you want in there from that standpoint. And those are all parameters are going to change. And that kicks out a number. And I've yet to find it wrong. Have you? I've never... There's been a couple applications where it's been kind of borderline questionable, but it was a tough application. It might have been 50 gallons a minute at 50 PSI. That is going to be tough for a centrifugal to hit because your flow is so low. Does that make sense? All right, well, guys, we'll get out of here. If you want to take a quick break, we'll meet out there in the, in the shop. We'll do the hands-on stuff and get out of your hair.